I was going to tell you about hepato about the liver, but then I didn't finish about you know healthy diet. So I'll talk about the liver the day after tomorrow. Now, what is the what is a healthy diet? A healthy diet is got is going to have a lot of antioxidant antioxidant to suppress free radicals action. Now let's add one more. Now once you have these free radicals in your body. If the free radicals goes to the left side, it damages your genes. But it goes to the right side if two uh, SOD should be produced to take those free radicals go and in come into the right side. Now this SOD is produced where? Yes, the liver. The liver cell has this gene which produces SOD. So those genes are recorded there in the liver cell. So scientists had this experiment. Remember those fruit flies? Now scientists took this SOD genes from this one fruit fly to the other fruit fly. So scientists transplanted this SOD genes. So this, the second fruit fly has twice more of SOD genes. Then this fruit fly lived twice longer than the normal one. So free radicals really influence on our life. So, you know, if you practice new start, it means you have a lot of SOD. You know, fruit flies are not the sensitive to the truth and the goodness and the beauty. You know, we think negatively sometimes, and if we're on the on the opposite side of the truth and the goodness and the beauty, then our so the genes will be turned off. You know, we're programmed to produce enough of SOD in our body, but because of ourselves, we turn off those SOD genes. So, you know, we have only one tenth of SOD. Now, in the Bible, you know, as you know, that, you know, people. In the beginning, like Genesis, you know they have lived, like they lived like n more than nine hundred years or so, but then you know they're, you know you see, and then uh, it got like shortened and shortened and shortened. Now why? Because you know many these days, you know they develop those nuclear bombs, and you know people got really evil thoughts, you know, and that's why. They are not really care for those the beauty and the goodness and the and the truth and that's why our lifespan got shortened. I was thinking in you know once I was thinking in that way. Now let's say if those turned off SOD genes are turned on, then we will be restored. Our damaged genes will can be restored. So you know we can so we can explain those ages in the Bible with this principle. Now how can we have that SOD in our body? How? If this gene is turned on, then we can live a very cheerful, energetic 
life. Now, those who can't turn on this gene, those who can't turn on this gene are the one who practiced new start. You receive the spark and you, you know, have the proper environment, then you will have enough of SOD and I'm sure you will have a happy life up until more than maybe 120 years. You know, we have this prejudice. You know, we naturally, automatically think when people get older, they will get sick. So when you get older and then you have, you know, some kind of, you know, you know, some kind of things happen to your body, I mean, like sicknesses or symptoms, then you automatically think, oh, because I'm getting older. But it is not true. You know, Bible teaches us, for example, let's say, you know, we can live up until 120. But even though we live up until 120 years old, we don't have to get sick. You know, for example, Moses. Moses, he didn't live a wonderful life, a rich life. Yeah, he had many difficult times. He, I'm sure he was very stressed as well. You know, as I read, you know, the story of Moses, I can tell that, hmm, yeah, if I try, I can live up until 120 years old. You know, Moses, he had a lot of difficulties. You know, he took all those thousands of people from, the, uh, from Egypt, and while he was in the wilderness, I'm sure he was, he, he was stressed. But even though he was stressed, he overcame this, you know, trouble by the help of the Spirit. You know, he died when he was 120, 120 years ago, years old. Now Deuteronomy 34, 7, it says, Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor abated. You know, he looked around the land of Canaan, and he died there, up in the mountain. You know, he didn't die because of a heart attack. Something got turned off. What? What was it? The spark. The spark left him. Moses, you have did a good job. Now you may sleep. I think it's a very wonderful thing. So originally we are programmed to die in this way. You know, but in our case, because we live a very bad life, you know, we get sick before even we die. You know, the spark really wants to get into our body, but then, you know, the, you know we deny the spark and we get sick and we suffer a lot. You know, if you practice new start, you know, when you die, you know, you won't suffer from disease or pain. You know, it's like the electricity, you know, deems, you know, elec you can deem the electricity and the light will go out, you know, things like that. You know, I will live up until 120. Even though I can't, but I will have this desire. You know, if I have this hope, if I have this, you know, positive idea, that will give me more years. So you might say, oh, isn't he embarrassed to say 
that he's going to live 120 years old, you know, please don't think like that. Now, if you want to have this SOD in your body, those SOD genes should be turned on, should be turned on. When I had dementia lecture, I told you that if someone says, oh, I'm sick and tired of thinking of other things, uh, I better die. I don't have enough luck, and so forth. And then your brain cells will produce aging process gene substances, and then you will eventually die. Remember, our genes respond to meaning. Think positive. Stay in the bright side. Stay on the bright side. Remember, think positive. Think positively. Now, if you break your balance, it is not good. Even though you eat healthy food, but if you overeat, you know, that will cause the, those free radicals produced in our body. If those overeating, if that overeating is really bad, then somebody should stop. Or somebody should be responsible. Somebody should be responsible to stop us not to e overeat. Our creator, I'm sure he knows that overeating is not good. If he knew, then I'm sure he programmed this gene in our body. You know, animals, they don't overeat. It doesn't mean they know. It doesn't mean they know what they are doing. I don't think they know we should eat this grass how much and that, you know, fruit that much. You know, animals, they eat, but then they stop eating. You know, nobody stopped them, but then all of a sudden, they lost their appetite. They lose their appetite. So animals, they don't overeat. You know, animals, they don't produce uh, those accelerating aging substances. Those substances are not produced in animals. Why? Because they don't overeat. Now, animals cannot overeat. Why? Because they don't have the freedom of choice. But we can overeat. Why? Because we have the freedom of choice. Even though God said, stop eating here, but we can refuse that offer. As we have the freedom of choice to refuse. Now, when you feel the beauty and when you have peace in you, you are not that greedy about food. You say, um, that is enough for me today. Maybe, you know, I will eat tomorrow. So, when you have peace and, you know, when you're comfortable, then, you, you know, you don't try to eat more and more. No, but when you're on the, on the opposite side of the truth and goodness and the beauty, you try to eat more. You try to overeat. Now, when you're in that love, this truth and the beauty, you say, oh, that is enough for me. I don't want to overeat. And then, you know, you're happy. And then even though you stop eating, you're happy. Hmm, that's enough. 
you're thankful. But when you're stressed, you know, when you hate someone, even though you're eating, you don't feel this, you know, that satisfaction. You know, CCK, CCK helps you to feel satisfaction. If CCK gene is turned on in your brain cell by the help of the spark, then you feel satisfaction. Now, God is watching. Now, God is watching me, Seng Lee. You know, even though I'm a doctor, I don't know how much. I don't know how much I should eat. But then, you know, God is watching over me while I'm eating. You know, even though I'm a doctor, even though I studied hard, I mean, even though I'm a scholar, it doesn't mean I have control over myself. It doesn't mean I have power to control. Even though I'm a scientist, let's say, I have no power. I have no strength to balance my diet. You know, doctors cannot calculate everything. Even myself, I don't know how much. Well, this afternoon, you had cold noodle, naengmyeon. Didn't you overeat? You know, one coil of noodle and two coils of noodle, three coils of noodle, you know, about three coil coils of noodle. Maybe you like four, five coils of noodle. You know, back in old time, I had to eat eight coils of noodle. Of course, the big, big one. Because if I didn't eat that much, I couldn't feel, you know, the satisfaction. But that was overeating. You know, as you know, I was very thin. I was weak. I was very thin at that time. So I was very ashamed of myself because I'm, you know, so thin. I really wanted to lose, I mean, gain weight. I really wanted that. So every time I eat, I Every time I ate, I ate as possible, as much as I could. So even though God said, Sang Lee, stop, that's enough, but I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear the voice of God. Why? Because according to my thought, I wanted to do it. But then I couldn't gain weight. When I became 53, I was thinking, well... I've been thin for 53 years, you know, then what to lose? What to lose? Let's just stay thin. Let's just be happy. Well, God will control my weight. I'm sure God thinks that this weight is proper for me. Let's just be thankful. So let's not overeat. You know, I prayed at the time. And then I gave all my weight problems to God. Honestly, frankly, seriously, I studied to eat. You know, I used to have eight coils of noodle, right? But after prayer, when I took four coils, God said, stop. So I said, do you know what I said? Come on, four coils, God. I need more than that. So I took five. And God said, stop. I said, I need one more, God. So I took six. So I got six coils of noodle. And I was eating. 
by the time it was like four, God said, stop. And I started to eat five. And then God really said, stop. But I said, come on, God. <laughs> you know, I repeated this several times. You know, I was, because these kind of things were repeated, and I was thinking, hmm, when I had six, when I had five, when I had four, what are, wh what are the differences? And I, I realized that when I had four, my con I felt the best. So I realized that my creator's will is the best for me. And later, I could be temperate. You know, I had only four coils today. Yesterday, we had jajangmyeon, right? You know, yes, after, after, you know, after eating jajangmyeon, you know, I wanted to eat more. You know, God said, that's enough, okay. But, you know, I wanted to have more. So, you know, I was uh, struggling. And I said, just a little more, okay, God. So I went over there to take that jajangmyeon, but then it was all gone. Jajangmyeon was all gone. So I couldn't have it. But then later I felt good. Temperance is this. You cannot be temperate by yourself. You but universal. But God, our Creator's will, will help us to be temperate. Well, you don't have to say, I'm not going to eat. I will eat four or three. No. You know, if you control your diet by yourself, then, you know, you, you will be devastated, okay, with food. So, you know, many ladies these days, they have anorexia and bulimia. They say, I'm not going to eat. I will never eat. I will never eat. And they eat very little on purpose. And they're like, I'm hungry, but... I'm going to I'm going to be patient but then later they explode. You know, we cannot control ourselves. So flexibly with God in love you should practice. So even though you overeat flexibly, okay? Don't blame yourself. Oh, I shouldn't have eaten. But, you know, I ate, so I will gain weight. And, you know, you then you, you know, throw up and things like that. Don't go extreme. Now, without God, you're always afraid because you gain weight and you have this fear in you. And so you go extreme. Extremely, you don't eat. Extremely, you eat. And then you throw up and things. Then you lose that joy that you get get from eating because eating itself becomes burden to you <laughs> to eat not to eat that's the problem you know you can say that many young ladies they have some problems these days Well, we don't know, and we can control how much, how much of food we cannot control. The moment when you realize that you don't have power over your diet, the moment that'll be the moment you will receive the power of God. Before, you know, you try very hard to do it by yourself and then you experience all the side effects.
you know, if we don't know what kind of nutrients we need every day, what, what kind of food and how much should I take, we don't know. What, do you think doctors know these kind of things? They don't even know theirs. then who knows better than doctors? Our creator, someone who is someone far beyond, higher than doctors, should be responsible for us. You know, we had acid rain these days so the when the acid rain comes down and then those calcium you know is melted in that rain and then those trees have no ca enough calcium because of the acid rain now you know giraffes they eat those leaves right but then recently scientists found out that these giraffes take animals bone and so scientists had uh, gave um, anesthesia, general anesthesia, to the giraffe. And they found, they took the blood test, and they found that this giraffe is lacking calcium in its blood. You know, giraffes don't know this kind of knowledge. Oh, calcium is very important for bone and so and so. And then uh, you can have calcium, you can get calcium from the bone and so and so. Well, giraffes don't have this kind of knowledge. We think we can do something with knowledge, but with knowledge itself, you cannot control yourself. Then what do you need? You no, know, gene, I mean, giraffes. This giraffe is eating the bone. This giraffe doesn't know whether it's lacking calcium or not. But as this giraffe walking along the field, you know, he felt like he felt like he felt like he wants wanted to eat the bone. He got this appetite. Yesterday I didn't feel like eating, but then today you know, feel like eating. Isn't this strange? Why? Because that is what you needed. That is what you need or needed. So even though someone says this is so good and so good, but if you don't have appetite for that food, then it'll damage, it'll do harm on your body. What kind of food is that? When you take taste, you know, first the bite, and then you feel like you're going to throw up, then that kind of food, well, did you decide to throw up when you take the food? But when you smell something, when you taste a little bit something, you feel like you want to throw up. It means instinctively you want to refuse. That kind of response, that kind of response is not from you, but you have no idea why you feel like you're going to throw up. You don't know the reason. And someone says, this is good, this is good. Try it, try it. But when you look at it, you feel, yuck. Try, try. Ah. You feel, yuck. That kind of food you shouldn't take. that will damage your liver. Especially those who have bad liver, you know, will happen, this kind of things. So to protect your liver, please don't even look at those yucky food. Now, this giraffe needs the bone. Well, actually, 
this giraffe had never taken this bone before. And this bone, you know, it doesn't look like yummy. But then he, this, it just had the appetite for the bone. Now, this kind of appetite, we don't control. You know, we need to be humble. Why? Because we think we control our appetite. It's not what we are doing. But God is sending the spark to control our genes. So that I don't have to take this harmful food. He wants to protect us. When we think this way, it means we are humble. You know, when I need the bone, I eat the bone. You know, when I feel like eating bone, then I eat the bone. Then, you know, it means, you know, you feel like you're doing it. You're very proud of yourselves. You think you are solving your own problems. That's what we call pride. So sin is pride. So sin is separation from God. It means you don't need God. Pride. When you're proud, you don't need God. When you don't need God, you become proud. Now, this is the one of the islands in Africa, Zanzibar. This is the article from National Geography. You know, these monkeys, they eat leaves and fruits, you know. You know, these leaves, well, monkeys don't really eat. They don't really like these leaves, these leaves. You know, once maybe every two months, you know, they come to this, you know, area and they, you know, eat uh, those leaves. And after they eat, and there's something very strange things happen. You know, they, they go down to the village where the natives live. You know, these natives, they cut this tree and then, you know, they made this uh, charcoal. After they find that charcoal, they start eating charcoal. They never eat charcoal usually in u um, usually, but then after taking those leaves, they go for this charcoal. And the scientists thought, hmm, maybe these leaves are poisonous. So they took those leaves and they looked into it. And they, they examined and they got the elements of the leaves and they found that those leaves are poisonous. When these monkeys needed the nutrition, nutrition from these leaves, they took the leaves, they ate the leaves, and then they went down to town, you know, and then went down to the village and they took the charcoal. You know, now, remember those Okinawa turtles? You know, because they're so wise, because they're so, you know, intelligent, they can find where to go. Do you think they're so intelligent and wise? It is from God. The wisdom and the spark, the same. If those animals don't have God's wisdom, they cannot live in this way. Now, let's say wisdom and the spark. Now, the monkeys, they want to eat those leaves. Why? Because they need that nutri nutrition from, the le from these leaves. You know, they, these monkeys don't know what kind of nutri nutrition they're going to take from these leaves, but only Creator knows. Now, then God gives this appetite to these monkeys, then these monkeys, of course, 
these monkey's genes should be turned on. What kind of genes? To feel that appetite. Well, it's called neuropeptide. That's the substance from this gene. The substance will make these monkeys to eat those leaves. Neuropeptide. Peptide is before heart protein. No. Neuropeptide Y. Initial NPY. So scientists use NPY. So when NPY is produced, then these monkeys want feel want to feel you know, they feel like they want to eat something. So God programmed this gene there so that God can control their diet. So when MPY is produced, these monkeys feel like eating those leaves. Now, let's go back to the giraffe story. A giraffe took the bone, and when he had enough calcium from the bone, you know, then he should stop. Then CCK genes... Then God sparked the CCK genes, and when this giraffe has CCK, then the giraffe will say, hmm, I had enough. I don't have to eat anymore. Now, giraffe will be satisfied. Isn't this interesting? You need to feel satisfaction when you stop eating. That is good. But even before you feel satisfaction, if you stop eating, then that's very unhappy. You know, those tragedy comes from unhappiness. When we want to control ourselves with our 5% of knowledge, then, you know, we're very unhappy. This is from Alaska. Also, this was taken from National Geography. Those are mountain goat. There's a um, salt mountain. You know, it's quite whitish. They're, they're all salt. They're licking the salt. Those mountain goats come here several times a year. But to come to this salt mountain, they have to cross this dangerous river. You're crossing the river right now. New Star program is crossing the river program. So I'm sure you have problems with simple food here. Because you want to have seasoned food, but our food here is not so much seasoned. But to have life, you need to overcome these obstacles. Now when you read Buddha's book, False ego should reach nirvana. False ego should find true ego. From this world to the world beyond. So they say, Ajay, Ajay, Para, Ajay. It means cross, cross, let's cross the river. Isn't this beautiful? Panya means Panya means light. Wisdom, light. 
we can say the spark. We can say that Panya is the spark. Panya is not the real title. Maha Panya. Paramilda Shimgyong. That's the real title. We usually say Panya Shimgyong. We miss those Maha Milda. Now, Maha means great, unlimited, great, unlimited. That's what it means. Do you know which world is the biggest country? Yeah, that's South Korea. Because South Korea means Tehan. Tehan means great and great. That's, you know, Chinese translation, of course. Chinese characters translation. So according to the letters, according to the meaning of the letters, we are the greatest and the biggest country. What a name. biggest and the best, you know. So we are very special people. Yeah. Now, Maha means so great that human beings cannot imagine. Well, in Christianity, we can say that is God. If we translate with Christianity, you can say Maha means God. You know, that's false ego. Cha A is false ego in Buddhism. And Jin A is true ego in Buddhism. And there is Te A. Now, Buddha said Teha. Now, what is Teha? That is God. You know, I don't think Buddhi Buddhism is wrong or Buddhism is nothing. I learned this philosophy from Yu Yong Mo. He was a great philosopher here in Korea. He was one of the greatest philosopher in the world, but then he didn't write a lot of books. He was never on TV or books on, on paper. People didn't know about him. He deeply studied on the Christianity and uh, Kung Tzu's philosophy and, you know, all the worldly philosophers' idea. He studied deeply on that. You know, as I learned from him, I realized that Thea means God. And the love we have, we call Chabi. And the love that they are does, that's we call great mercy. Grace and mercy. You know, we don't love our enemies. But God loves enemies. We call that teja, te pi. Great mercy, great grace. Now, te, te, the word te, Chinese character te, is maha. So if I say maha panya, now I say panya is light or wisdom, right? So maha panya means great light, great 
wisdom. And Panya Milda means cross the river, crossing the river. The great wisdom and great light which makes us to cross the river. And Kyung means the book. So if you read those Buddha's book, you will be able to cross the river by the help of great wisdom and great light. So, you know, I studied that Buddha's book. You know, those common words we know is 공즉 시색 색즉 시공. Those are kind of common phrases that we all, common people know in Korea. 공즉 시색 색즉 시공. What does that mean? 공즉 시색. They're all Chinese characters. Now here in this world, this world is filled with something. What is that? The spark. You know, we are not moral. If we don't have the spark, the eternity, we're just a moral being. 색즉 시공. 색 means exist. 공 means empty or nothing. They say there's something, but actually there's nothing. Even though we think there's something like money, power, authority, you know those things, we think we have something, but then that's nothing. What does that mean? 공즉 시생. We think there's nothing, but we have something. That's the spark. That's the wisdom. We feel like this whole universe is empty or nothing, but that in the universe, there's the spark, there's wisdom. So so that our genes can be function wisely. 공즉 means seems, seems like there's nothing, but 시색 seems like it's nothing, but then there's something. New start is practicing para milda, means crossing the river. You know, as I look at this picture, I feel like, mm, so you guys know what panya shingyong is, means crossing the river. You know, this nature, in the nature, you see these kind of things. You know, th these goats should cross the road, I mean, cross the river in their own position. We human beings should also cross our own river to reach to that salt mountain or our our destination. So how much and what kind of food we should eat is not we should worry about what we should worry about, but we should give all those kind of things to God. So now then we realize that if we want to keep life, we need to have that wisdom. Then we seek the wisdom. If we want to be healthy, if we want to have life, we need that wisdom. Let's talk about free radicals. You know, I get on the plane very often. So, you know, I am a million miler. It means I have like million miles. I think I have one million 300,000 miles or so. You know, it means I've been traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I have this one speci specific, you know, this airline. And, you know, I am a million uh, miler. By the way, you know, Korean airline is really good, but then it's very expensive. I think it's it's 200 or $300 more expensive than, uh, you know, others. Sometimes it's like $500 more expensive than Northwest. But anyways, they're good. Good airline. You know, I like Korean airline, you know. Korean Airlines. You know, I can't afford the business or the first class, but I always use economy class. But if you're a million, million miler, you can actually check in with the uh, first class people. So you don't have to wait in line. That is good. Even though I'm a first class, you know, passenger, I can get into the first, you know, class. You know, my luggage will go into the first class, but then person, I have to get into the economy class. You know, you know I can also go to uh, first class lounge at the airport, but actually where I sit, that is economy. I have to go way back to sit. You know, sometimes I meet my friends at the first class lounge. You know, because they're all, you know, like, you know, presidents or a CEO of so-and-so hospital. So they always take first class lounge. So when my friends meet me at the first class lounge, they think... I have I am rich, but it, it's the time to get on. You know, it's time for boarding, and then I say goodbye, my friends. I go way back. Interesting. You know, I was at the San Francisco airport. Well, these days, uh, San Francisco had a um, different um, air gate like international and domestic. They have different exit now. Anyways, I was standing there, and she looks like Filipina, but she had a Korean airline, you know, badge there. She was helping people. I was, sit I was standing in the first class line, and she came and asked me, uh, are you really first class person? And I said, I'm a milliner. I'm a million miler, and she asked me to give her the card. You know, if I say I'm a million miler, then, you know, she's supposed to pass me, but then she stopped me. You know, if you're busy, if you're busy, then just stay in first class, you know, first class line. Then just say you're a million miler. You know, they don't really tell you to, you know, go this way and that way. Because first the class, there are not many passengers. So, you know, they just pass you. So if you're in a hurry, just stand there. Anyway, so I was looking for my card, Miley's card. I wasn't happy, of course, but I was patient. And then, you know, I missed, I, I, my, my Miley's card was missing. Oh my, I was very embarrassed. Uh, my, my Miley's car was missing. You know, if I just show her, you know, she would say, okay, pass. And then, you know, those, that Filipina stewardess, she was waiting. And I was thinking, and I, and I remembered that, uh, that card is in my passport. And I showed it to her. And then she said, thank you. Oh, and I looked her, you know, at the back. And, oh, I'm sure my free radicals okay, were produced at the time. I was upset. You know, because I give you, you know, lectures. And I know... 
what I'm supposed to do, but that I cannot control over my stress. Now, to control my stress, you have to ask God to give you power. You know, even me, myself, I can't do it instantly. So, you know, she left, and then I started to pray. You know, you know, God, I am really upset. I think I have a lot of free radicals here. Now, please, God, direct and lead these free radicals to go to SOD. Now, I need the beauty and the goodness and the truth to lead these free radicals to go to the good side. Oh, I was so embarrassed. Oh, what a stewardess. You know, if I kept thinking negatively, you know, my free radicals will damage my genes. I knew I have to stop. I had to stop. So I prayed, God, do something. You know, I was waiting, praying. You know, you don't have to get your hands to pray, you know. kind of like shamanist way rubbing your hands so I was there praying, standing praying God please help me how can I think positively how can I interpret this situation positively and then I could hear the voice of life wise thinking God spoke to me saying Lee Let's say you are the manager. You are the manager of Korean Airline in San Francisco. Then do you think do you think she works very well? You know, sh actually she did her job. She did her job really well. So, you know, I had nothing to say. I was speechless and I said, "Well, she's a good worker and then God said then why are you upset so I said okay I was relieved after that I was happy and then SOD genes are turned on then SOD tracks attracts my free radicals and then it makes my free radicals into water and oxygen Don't listen to this story just a story. You need to practice this in your life. If you repeat these things, that's wonderful. Then you have something to share with other people. Let's say I didn't practice New Start. And I was on the airplane, you know, very upset. Oh, what an embarrassing woman. Oh, I had a bad, unlucky day. And, you know, I got on the airplane and I sat. And next to me, there was, a, you know, my school alumni. And I start talking. You know, I start talking about that stewardess and, oh, what a bad day and so and so. You know, and use, you know, you, 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 you curse, you know. Her, you know, ah, yeah, I was very embarrassed and now I'm upset. Ah. You know, at that moment, when you start talking to your friend, then your free radicals will be produced again and it will damage, damage your genes. And then your friend will tell something about his embarrassed moment. And then, you know, we love to be negative because they're very interesting sometimes. You need to be out of those bad habits. You need to be free from those bad habits. You know, girls, they gossip, you know? You know, gossiping is really bad. That's not beautiful. So, you know, I got out to the in, um, Incheon International Airport. And then, you know, Mr. Che came and, Hi, hi, Dr. Lee, how was your travel? And then I start talking. 
Oh, you know what happened in San Francisco? Oh, that bad. Mm. Do you know what she did? And blah, blah, blah. While, you know, while I'm talking, I have my free radicals again. You know, sometimes you have bad thing happen, you know, one bad thing, but then you keep talking and talking. You know, especially women, they never forget. So they talk and talk again and again. You know, what did you say at that time? You know, you just keep talking and talking about negative things. We shouldn't do that. We should cross that river, the river that we don't have to do these things. We need to think positively. We should stay on the positive side. Now, healthy diet is not your knowledge diet. Healthy diet. If you want to have a good diet, healthy diet, you need to practice with the wisdom that is you need to do it with the life. Now let's look at the Bible. In Genesis, there are trees, right? The tree of good and evil. Oh, it's not tree of good and evil. There is a tree, the tree of knowledge, the tree of knowledge and the tree of life. We have two trees. It's not tree of good and evil. The tree of life and tree of knowledge. Now, life means wisdom. What's that? What does that mean? Do you want to give everything to God or do you want, do you want to do whatever you want to do because you're so proud of yourself? Now, in the beginning of the world, there are two trees, tree of life, tree of knowledge. God gave us freedom of choice. Would you like to choose the knowledge or would you like to choose the wisdom? If you choose the knowledge, you die. If you choose the knowledge, I will perish you. It's not like that. With wisdom, you can live. You can have life. But if you choose knowledge, you cannot keep, you cannot sustain your life. That's the whole concept of the Bible. So I in Genesis, we have two trees, trees of tree of life and tree of knowledge. It's a great philosophy. If you don't know this, let's say usually we interpret this way. God created these two trees to see if we listen to him or not. You know, God could have done in a different way. You know, if you, you know, pick, you know, that fruit from the tree of knowledge, then you die. It's not like that. It's about the knowledge and the wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. And knowledge, you can learn. If you compare knowledge to Wisdom is like you're, it's like you're digging in front of bulldozer. You know, wisdom is so great that you can even know. I give you this wisdom as a gift. Wisdom will keep your life within the 95% of subconscious. But then you want to try very hard with the 5% of your conscious. But that is your misunderstanding. And you will end up with death. Please rely on my wisdom. That is the whole concept of the Bible. then this Bible becomes, yes, that is true. Now, if you study genes, now you've been studying about the genes. Now, how do you feel? We cannot control ourselves. You know, those monkeys and those giraffes, they, couldn't co they can't control, you know, themselves. You know, Okinawa, I mean, those 
turtles, they can't go to Okinawa by themselves. We have this great wisdom. Remember, panya, maha panya, great light, great wisdom. So Buddha, I really respect ma. I really respect uh, Buddha and Kong, Chinese philosopher. But if we misunderstand those wisdom of Buddha and wisdom of Kong Tzu, then it becomes religion, Buddhism and Confucianism. If those truth of Jesus is, you know, fell down, then it becomes, you know, Christianity. And they fight all the time when it becomes our knowledge. Now, if you misunderstand what I say, some people say, oh, Seng Li said Buddhism and Christianity is the same. But that's not right. You misunderstood me. Some people understand in the level of religious fallacy. But it's different. If Buddha, you know, is alive and goes to the temple, or if Christian, I mean, if Christ is alive and he goes to the church and see people like, hallelujah, and crying, you know, they'll f what are they doing here? You know, those kind of mutated, those kind of changed ideas are controlling this world. So we misunderstand all the time. Now, now you understand the tree of knowledge and tree of life? Now let's go to the Proverbs. Proverbs. The Proverbs is uh, the book of knowledge, book of wisdom, book of wisdom. Chapter 3, verse 4, 4. Her proceeds are better than the prophets of silver. Verse 18, it says, She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. So Genesis and the Bible itself explains what wisdom is. So the true healthy diet is the diet of wisdom. You have to understand this. If someone comes up to you and says, this is good and that is good, that kind with that kind of understanding it's not worth it's not the the food is not worth it if it's so important and good to you then you know why wouldn't god teach you and why wouldn't god tell you to take it especially you know back in old time in korea some people say you know so and so's you know, raw food, diet, that's nonsense. There are like wheat, barley, beans, and brown rice. You know, we can all eat that. Why, why do you have to dry those grains and then, you know, grind them and then you... You dry them and just grind them and you make little, you know, pads. And why do you eat like that way? You know, that's just like a 5,000 worth. But then, you know, they sell like 200,000 won. Very expensive. Even the package wrapping paper. I mean, they're all expensive. And then people buy those things to eat. Why? It's like $5 worth, but then they sell like $200. Why do you eat? In the beginning, you know, you feel like it's good for you because you haven't taken those kind of nutrition. So you feel like, mm, it's good, it's nice. 
Mm, it's it's nice. And you keep eating in the beginning. Second time, fine. But then three, four days later, you feel like, oh, you lose appetite. Why? Because your body gives you signal. God says, you have enough now. You don't have to eat this, you know, same food every day. But then you keep eating. Oh, come on. This is $200. Then you keep eating. And then you drink it. Then your body and your God says, please, please, don't, don't. And then, and then you start, you know, throwing up. But then you keep eating. You keep eating. If you do with your knowledge, it happens. You know, it sounds like it. But it's not life. Well, actually, it will produce more of free radicals and it will damage your genes. So the story of the story of the tree of knowledge and the tree of life is this. Now, you can hear and you can read these kind of stories from the book. Now, we say knowledge is power, right? Now you know. Now you know how and what. You know, you, if you ask God, then God will tell you what and how. Now, when you are with God, then you can be temperate, you know, more. And you can be more sensitive with what you eat and how much you eat. So you need to practice new start with, you know, this kind of idea. You know, when you listen to this lecture, maybe this is very new to you. When it is new, you know, when after the lecture, when you go out, when you leave this store, and by the time you, you know, get your meal tray, then you forget, even though you heard something very important, something very true, but then... It goes all away. It disappears. Then your energy will go away as well. So you need to review. You need to write down and review. And you have to listen more and more. You know, if we, if we want to make money, we don't have to upload our lectures on the internet you know maybe we can just give you like five minutes uh, video clip so that you click okay and if you want to listen more you know you have to send us money things like that but you know we have no intention to make money you know we upload our site for free you know we spend a lot of money because we use server on the internet but then we you know open up our lectures yeah you can listen to my lecture on the internet for free but i ask you remember you are 91st batch this tape is very important for you why because you've never had this kind of hopeful moment and joyful moment in your life. Now, this moment is so critical and important in your life because you're fighting for your disease. Now you're, you know, you're trying to cross that road, very meaningful time. Now, this tape has this moment in it. And you have to experience this more and more. And you know, through the tape, you can see, oh, my roommate over there, oh, that person over there. So you know some people here, you know, also in this tape. So please, 91st batch, purchase this tape. Well, remember, I'm not, you know, on a selling business, okay? For yourself, buy the tape for you. You know, lectures are all changing in according to every batch. So you can, you know, watch all the different, you know, lectures on the internet. But 
but buy the tape and connect you know this tape to you know like th the big screen and then watch it and enjoy it those who succeeded with their fighting you know for disease they practice all the time you know watching you know programs you know they practice all the time at home Those who succeeded also, they, you know, always keep in touch with those uh, friends that they met in that batch. Those people succeed. So please, remember, try to purchase DVD of 91st batch and try to watch as often as you, could, as you can. Remember those, you know, you had a lot of endorphins and you have very beautiful memories here. Those moments, those things will turn on your genes. Ninety-first batch tape will give you the strongest influence. Now, you understand what healthy diet is? Now remember, expensive and difficult to buy, those food are not your healthy diet. Healthy diet is so easy to practice. Eat wisely. Eat wisely. Like the giraffe that we saw, like the monkey. Eat wisely. and reunite with God, reunite with your Creator. In that relationship, you can have a healthy diet.